Okay, the, the next one, we have here your familial macro thrombocytopenia with your glycoprotein 6, a uh, glycoprotein 4 abnormality. So this one is inherited here as autosomal dominant, and this is characterized here with a platelet count of your 45,000. So the problem with this one is not on the, the problem with the glycoprotein 4 is not on the concentration of your glycoprotein 4 because you have abnormal you still have a normal na concentration of glycopro glycoprotein 4. The problem with the glycoprotein 4 here with the glycosylation process. The glycosyla glycosylation process here, the first step for the synthesis of your glycoprotein 6. And that's where the problem is. For the next one, we have your Montreal platelet syndrome. So this one is um, inherited as autosomal dominant. And ito yung pinakamababa na platelet, 5 to 40,000 lang. And this is characterized here by spontaneous aggregation. And it's characterized also here by the defective na calpin. Calpin here is a protein that, uh, I mean, this is, um, okay, this is uh, found in the receptor membrane of your platelets which serve here as a binding site of your adhesive proteins like your fibronectin. Okay, the next one, we have your Mayheglen anomaly. So the Mayheglen anomaly inherited as autosomal dominant and consider here the most common type of your inherited na giant platelets. Mayheglen would have here the platelet count of your 60 to 100,000. And this is characterized also here by the presence of your WB's inclusion in the form of your Dolly Amato bodies. And this one would have here a very large platelets because of the abnormal distribution of your microtubules. On the next one, we have here the Fechner's. Fechner syndrome characterized here by inherited as autosomal dominant trait. And this one would have here the platelet count of 30 to 90,000. And the Fechner's would have manifestation of three, three disorders. One, at the earlier stage of the patient, the patient would have here an eye defect in the form of your glaucoma and your cataract formation. Later on, when the patient reaches the age of 20, 30 years old, the kidney problem, nephritis, the nephritis here would eventually try to progress to become a severe form of a kidney disease. And later on, the patient would have here uh, hearing defects where result here to the loss of the hearing of the patient. On the next one, we have your Sebastian syndrome. It's also inherited here as autosomal dominant with a platelet count of 40 to 120,000. But your Sebastian would have only have here a minimal bleeding manifestation and most likely no clinical bleeding or manifestation of that. Okay, then we have also here your Epstein syndrome. So Epstein syndrome here characterized also by a giant platelet, and then we also have here the thrombocytopenia. This one is inherited as autosomal dominant with a platelet count of thirty to sixty thousand. So this one resembles also here our uh, Fechner, only that wala lang siyang eye manifestation, wala siyang glaucoma, wala din siyang cataract formation. But what it has here, meron siyang hearing defects, meron din siyang uh, kidney problem. Okay, so this would also be characterized here by the presence of a very prominent surface-connected canalicular system and it would appear here to have a spongy cytoplasm. Okay, next we go to the disorder related to your platelet secretion. So, the problem in the disorder here with the platelet secretions, they could not secrete or release the content of their, of their granules. You call this one as your storage pool diseases. So, manifestation, you could have here your myocutaneous bleeding, hematuria, we have also your epistaxis. Okay, the platelet count is normal because again, um, uh, this is a qualitative disorder naman, hindi siya quantitative. Bleeding time would have prolonged. The bleeding time kasi is, uh, is uh, this is a screening test primary for evaluation of your primary hemostasis. All problem related to your primary hemostasis, regardless if there's problem in your blood vessels or platelets, it would have here prolonged results. Anyway, I will just be discussing the 
different uh, mga blood, mga tests for evaluation of your primary hemostasis for the last topic in the period. Okay, then we have here disorder related to your secretion of your platelets. First one, we have the problem with the secretion of your dense granules. So we have here your Hermansky Pudlak. Hermansky Pudlak here characterized as uh, auto this one is narrated here as autosomal recessive. And that one characterized here by an albinism. Most likely kasi uh, with your dense, I mean with your problem disorder related to your secretion of platelets, the patient would have also here the albinism. Because again, just like your mga ENZ, mga may lysosomal enzymes, di ba nasa, ano sila nasa granules, including your melanosomes. Since ang melanosomes na rin part of the granules din siya, so you could not secrete that one. So the prob pinaka-general problem is could not secrete. And even your melanosomes, hindi sila ma is not also being secreted. And therefore, walang melanocyte and walang color ang skin na patient. So expect to have here to have also the albinism manifestation with all the problems related to your uh, secretion with your platelets. Okay, so... Your Hermansky Pudla characterized here by oculocutaneous albinism, which is a tyrosine positive. It's also characterized also here by steroid deposition in your reticulo endothelial system. And that one is also defects most likely rely lie on the mutation or chromosome number 19. Next, we have here your Sijakigashi. So this is autosomal recessive, but this one would have here the partial albinism. Okay, so accelerated phase characterized here by lymphocyte proliferation in our lymph nodes, in our liver, in our bone marrow, and even the position of your macrophages in your tissues. Then you also have here, so the defects would have here protein gene, which try to code here for the defects in your Sijakigashi is located in chromosome number 13. Another one, we have your Wiscott Aldrich. Again, Wiscott Aldrich is uh, a sex link. This one is uh, sex link related. Inherited here as sex link. And your Wiscott Aldrich, on the other hand, is the defects with a combination here of your alpha and your dense granules. Okay, now we go to the platelet disorders related to your disorder with the secretion of your alpha granules. So we have your gray platelet syndrome. So the gray platelet syndrome here being called as a gray platelet because your platelets appears to be gray in your right stain smear. This one is narrated here as autosomal recessive characterized by lifelong mild bleeding tendency. So lifelong mild bleeding tendency. The patient would have here mild fibrosis. So fibrotic na bone marrow, it's not producing here much of the uh, fibrotic para siyang scar and therefore it would affect also here the storage of your newly synthesized platelet-derived growth factors. Platelet-derived growth factors are one of your content of your alpha granules. Most likely, ito ang kanyang ma-affect affect here in the storage. Another one, we have your other storage pool diseases. So, this we have your alpha-dense combination of the defects in your alpha and the dense granules. Quebec, the, Quebec here, on the other hand, characterized by the defects in your multimerine. Multimerine is a protein, okay, which eventually try to be stored in your alpha granules along with your factor 5 complex. Okay, next we have here the problem related to your thromboxane pathway or your eicosanoid pathway. So, that's for the production of your thromboxane. So, we have your aspirin-like Disorders. So aspirin-like disorders characterized here by hereditary deficiency and the necessary enzymes needed for your thromboxane pathway. Ano nga mga enzymes kailangan natin? To start with your phosphatidylinositol, converted at one to your prostaglandin, you'll be needing phospholipase A2. Then we have your arachidonic acid, converting that one to your prostaglandin with the cyclooxygenase. Okay, thromboxane synthase para convert ang PGH2 to your thromboxane. If the patient would have here the problem of genetic disorders or genetic deficiency of production of those enzymes necessary for your eicosanoid pathway, then does become here your aspirin-like disorders. 
Later on, we'll discuss what's the effect of the aspirin with your platelet activation. Okay, then we have a disorder related to your phospholipid distribution. First one, we have your SCAT syndrome. SCAT syndrome may be characterized by the defects in the, in the scramblase. Scramblase, this is the enzyme, protein enzyme, let's start here, that would allow your phospholipids, phosphatidyl inositol, ay phosphatidyl serine, and phosphatidyl ethanolamine to lift to the outer surface. During your, during your platelet activation. So, pag na-activate ang platelet natin, lumalabas si phosphatidyl serine, phosphatidyl ethanolamine dapat sa labas. In order for that, para maging ano siya, surface receptor, para ma-activate ang ating coagulation factors or activation of your vitamin, vitamin K dependent coagulation factors. In short, para ma-activate ang ating coagulation factors. Ano yung yayayari dito sa SCAT syndrome natin? Hindi sila nag-flip outside. And therefore, ano mangyayari pag hindi nag-flip outside? So, it will not activate here our coagulation complex formation. Another one, we have your Storm-Morgan syndrome. Storm-Morgan syndrome, that in hand, is the opposite of your SCAT syndrome. Ito naman, kahit walang activation or walang hindi or kahit wala kang activator like your ligand or agonist, it's still undergoing here the flipping process. So, flip ng flip lang siya after surface here. And it's because here the problem in your translocase. Translocase maintain your normal assembly of your phospholipid membrane in such a way na dapat phosphatidylinositol natin ay nasa labas, phosphatidylserine ethanolamine natin ay nasa loob. Mag-flip lang sila once your platelet undergoing here the platelet activation with your agonist or ligand. Pag wala, hindi siya mag-flip dapat. So, more kaya nangyari dito, nag-flip siya even wala kang agonist. Ito, hindi nag-flip, ito naman, flip ng flip. Then, we have also here other disorders related to your abnormality the platelets with an acquired disorder. So, like, for example, we have your drug-induced, multiple myeloma, cardiopulmonary bypass, liver disorder, and we have your kidney problem, uremia. Then, we have here the drug-induced, could also induce here your abnormality in the platelets, activation in the presence of your drugs. Like, for example, you have your aspirin. Aspirin try to inhibit here the platelet activation, okay, by acetylating your cyclooxygenase. And the effect of the aspirin here is irreversible. That one is permanent. It's not being permanent. Okay, once your platelets would able to have here the aspirin here, generally, or your body would have an aspirin, it would trigger the activation of platelets until such time the platelets would um, mamatay na ang platelet natin. Remember here that the platelet would have here a lifespan of 8 to 9 days. So, ganun ang effect niya. Mag- uh, regenerate lang ang ating platelet with its normal function if you produce here a new platelets. Only uh, pag wala nang pisa ang ating aspirin. But for those na mga platelets which has this been exposed to the aspirin, so until their lifetime, hindi na, sa, hindi na sila magiging effective or functional ulit. At unless may bago kang platelet, so yun ang magpa-function. But those which has been exposed to the aspirin, they will not be activated anymore. That's why aspirin, pag nag, uh, when we are having uh, sa blood bank, pag nag-donate ang patient ng blood, so prior to the blood donation, you ask if the patient is on the aspirin therapy. Pag nasa aspirin therapy ang patient, like if the patient wanted to donate for platelet concentrate, hindi siya muna, it will, you will not allow the patient here to donate pag nasa aspirin therapy siya because again, your aspirin try to uh, uh, inactivate here or try to destroy the cyclooxygenase enzyme which is needed here para makonvert sa nulit ng cyclooxygenase natin. Okay, this is needed here to convert your prostaglandin I mean your arachidonic acid to your prostaglandin. Okay, and therefore pag wala kang cyclooxygenase it will not proceed with the activation of your platelets para makapagproduce ka ng thromboxane. Then we have also here other drugs which has here antiplatelet activity. So alcohol here try to inhibit your thromboxane synthesis na or the production of your thromboxane. 
The other one, we have your dextran and we have your hydroxyethyl starch. Also try to inhibit here your membrane function of your platelets. And last disorder here with our platelets, we have your hyperaggregation of your platelets. Okay, so hyperaggregation of platelets here is ano siya, um, pabibo na platelets. Okay, and uh, too much aggregation of the platelets would have here the thrombotic tendency. Thrombotic tendency kasi, di ba, aggregate siya na aggregate, magkaklam na kaklam. And therefore, what you have here, thrombus formation. So, hyperaggregation here is actually a condition where the platelets is being aggregated even if you have here a very small concentration of your agonist or ligand. So, may required na concentration ng ating agonist or ligand for your platelets to undergo aggregation. Even, however, here pag in this condition, even if you have a very small concentration ng agonist or ligand, as to, in respect to its usual dapat na recommended na concentration, mag-aggregate na siya agad. Making this one as your hyper-aggregatable platelets. Usually, this seen here in the condition like your hyperlipidemia, DM, peripheral arterial occlusion, stroke here, and your myocardial infarction. And that's why we associate the presence of your hyper-aggregatable platelets with the thrombosis. These are your thrombus formation in your artery. Example of your hyperaggregatable platelet, we have your sticky platelet syndrome. Sticky platelet syndrome here is hyperaggregation of your platelets in response specifically to your agonist ADP and your epinephrine. Usually, this one try to be induced here during your emotional stress. Another one, you could also have here hyperaggregation of your platelets in vitro. Pag in vitro, after you have collected the blood, if you try to steer your blood sample, it would also have here manifestation of your hyperaggregation. Okay, thank you.